Welcome to the Insightful Professor. In this lecture topic, we will investigate a powerful feature of objects called inheritance. Inheritance is based on a family tree of object types that forms a type hierarchy. This hierarchy consists of a parent type called a supertype and one or more levels of child types called subtypes. The child types are derived from the parent type. This means that subtypes share many of the characteristics of their supertype. This feature is often used in object-oriented programming languages such as Java and C++ to enhance semantics of the application domain being represented. Our approach in this lecture will be to first introduce concepts that underlie inheritance and then to explain and illustrate how these concepts and how inheritance in general is implemented or supported within an object relational database system. When we develop software applications or database systems, our goal is to achieve a faithful representation of real world entities. However, due to semantic deficiencies in the software that we work with, a number of problems exist particularly with database and relational database systems. With respect to relational database, questions that might come up to assess our representation would include, what do the attributes and relations that we've implemented actually represent? What do they mean? How do we choose a relational schema for a particular database? When do database operations make sense? And how do we maintain database consistency? Referring to rules that apply in the real world for the operation of these entities, we're modeling that type of behavior as well within our representation. To achieve a more accurate representation of real world entities, we think about the concept of enhancing semantics. Coming up with a representation that is more accurate, more faithful with respect to what exists in the real world. Traditional database systems, whether they be hierarchic, network, or relational, fail to capture semantics. These systems provide only the data structures for storing the values and support for operations to be applied to these structures. By enhancing the semantics of a system, we are able to improve the interaction between users of the system and our representation of these objects or entities. So enhancing the semantics of a system was actually a major goal that was addressed by the work of Peter Chung. Back in the 1970s, he developed the entity relationship model and presented his findings to the world. An entity relationship model, as described by Chun, captures semantics, but falls short of being a complete data model like the relational model. What we mean is that the relational model accounts for structure, operations, and integrity. An entity relationship model lacks a description of structure and operations. In referring to the network, hierarchic, and relational data models, Chun described the entity relationship model as a generalization or extension of existing models. When designing a database, we talk about abstractions that are used to model the system. This allows the designer to focus on details that are most relevant to what the application involves while ignoring other details. In those domains where there is a large number of relevant details, a hierarchy of abstractions can be used to achieve a greater degree of comprehension. Abstractions are modeled as aggregation or generalization. Both aggregation and generalization may enhance understanding of the domain and our representation or model. 
However, the focus remains on structural aspects of the model, the attributes of a relation. Inheritance is a semantic issue as we are interested in more than structural similarities. The fault with the relational model in terms of semantic deficiency lies at least in part with vendor implementation and lack of faithfulness to the theoretical foundation of the model. The relational model was sufficiently rich to address our representational concerns. However, vendors omitted a key element, domain support, which is really a semantic notion. The current debate about how best to support complex data within a database system, that is, should we take a pure object-oriented approach, should we take a relational hybrid approach or object relational, can be attributed to neglect in this area. The work by C.J. Date and Hugh Darwin provides interesting reading along this line. The issues that we're talking about, the problems that we're describing, are associated with modeling semantics and these are not new, nor are they unique to database systems. Historically, research has investigated the idea of richer, fuller modeling. Semantic networks have been used in psychology research during the 1960s and 70s to model human memory. In the field of artificial intelligence, researchers have used semantic networks as a knowledge representation formalism. Semantic networks provide a means of representing concepts or objects and events or relations. These are nodes and links between these nodes. Semantic networks further support characteristics which are used to represent states or situations with actual values or characteristics represented by these value node combinations. Thus, we wish to emphasize the point that the idea of faithful representations and faithful models is more than a database issue, more than a database problem. Semantic network representations support the notion of what is called an ISA hierarchy. This allows reasoning about things within the application domain. For example, we identify the properties of a student. Then we say that John is a student. From this, we can deduce many facts about John because he is a student. If a student has a student ID number, a grade point average, a major, and an academic advisor, because John is a student, he possesses all of these attributes or properties. So this ability results from the inheritance of a generalized set of student properties for John. The notion of inheritance can be carried to other levels, allowing us to learn even more about John. If a student is a person, a person can move about, then John can move about. A database is typically considered as a store of data. Data would be raw, unprocessed facts that can be used to produce information. Information is something useful in answering questions and making decisions. In the field of artificial intelligence, there's a third kind of order. We call it knowledge. Knowledge can be considered a collection of related facts, procedures, models, and heuristics that can be used in problem solving or inference systems. Knowledge may be regarded as information in context, as information organized so that it can be readily applied to solving problems, perceptions, and learning. 
There are several commonly used methods to organize and represent knowledge. We've already mentioned briefly semantic networks. We'll now consider inclusion hierarchies, a general approach to represent knowledge that closely relates to our current interests in database. Inclusion hierarchies are appropriate for dealing with knowledge about objects that can be grouped into classifications such that there are some categories and subcategories. Inclusion hierarchies may be used as an organizing scheme in connection with other methods of knowledge representation. In fact, much of our knowledge about the world is organized hierarchically. This results in groups of classes or sets. Classes are further grouped into superclasses and into bigger superclasses using the ISA hierarchies that we've mentioned. Let's consider an example of an inclusion hierarchy to support the notion of inheritance. First, we say that a bird has feathers. Then we note that a pigeon is a bird. So we start off with a generalization about all birds, and then we use isa to define that a pigeon is a bird. Hence, what we can deduce is that a pigeon has feathers, and that's the benefit of the inheritance. We can make this conclusion because a pigeon is included in the class of bird, and certain properties of the bird class will then be automatically inherited by the pigeon. Programming languages and database systems provide support for data types. We can select a particular data type to represent values of our variables, our constants, our literals, or fields of some record or complex structure. The choice that we make determines the valid operations that will be applied or can be applied to the items in this representational environment. The data type options available for some particular definition are determined by the compiler we're using or by the database system vendor. Typically, there are a limited number of options for such built-in or vendor-supplied data types. The notion of abstract data types allows a programming language or database system to be extended. Well, let's consider the benefits of inheritance. Software designers can build new modules or classes or object types on top of an existing hierarchy of modules. There's no need to redesign and recode from scratch. The new classes inherit behavior or the operations that are permitted and representation or structure, the attributes. The inheriting behavior enables what we'll call code sharing and reusability among modules. Inheriting representation enables structure sharing among objects. Inheritance provides a natural mechanism for organizing information. Recall that we said much of our knowledge of the world is already organized hierarchically. Inheritance allows a construction of more specialized systems from existing class hierarchies. Inheritance is the means by which a new class can be defined in terms of a previously defined class. We wish to note that the terminology used to describe inheritance varies a bit. Some object-oriented languages and object-oriented systems will assign different names or use different terms for some concept. We have already experienced a difference in the terminology used by most object-oriented programming languages and that used by object relational database systems. So inheritance involves a base class, a superclass, or a supertype, and a derived class, 
or a subclass, or a subtype. This base class is the general class. The derived class is the specialized class. The derived class is said to be based on or derived from the base class. The derived class inherits the member variables, the attributes, and the member functions, the methods of the base class. There's no need to declare and write them in the derived class. New member variables and functions may be added to the derived class to make it more specialized than the base class. The base class can be thought of as the parent, and the derived class, the child. Thus, inheritance can be perceived as a parent-child relationship. Real-life objects are typically specialized versions of other more general objects. For example, the term insect describes a very general type of creature with numerous characteristics. Grasshoppers and bumblebees are insects. They share the general characteristics of an insect. However, they have special characteristics that are unique to their particular types. Grasshoppers have a jumping ability. Bumblebees have a stinger. Grasshoppers and bumblebees, then, are specialized versions of an insect. Thus, we can look at generalization and specialization and describe the attributes and behavior or methods that are common or shared by all insects, putting that as the supertype. Then we can talk about the specialization and talk about bumblebees and what attributes they have that are not common to all insects, and likewise grasshopper and what makes them unique or distinctive. The relationship between the base class and a derived class is often referred to as the is a relationship that we've described. The grasshopper is a insect. A poodle is a dog. A car is a vehicle. A specialized object has all characteristics of the general object. Additional properties or characteristics then can be incorporated that make it special or unique. In object-oriented programming, inheritance is used to create an is a relationship among classes. We might say we can extend the capabilities of a class. Inheritance involves the superclass, the generalization, and a subclass, the specialization. The subclass then is based on or extended from the superclass. By following an abstract data type approach, the specification or interface of a data type is separated from its implementation. This means the choice of representation of the structural aspects of the data type are distinct from the behavior or operational aspects of the data type. Details of the implementation are not important to a user of the abstract data type. The interface provides all the information that is needed to make use of the type. In fact, information details are generally hidden from the outside world, the concept of information hiding. From an object-oriented programming language perspective, we see that an abstract data type is defined through a class. A class defines both the structure and the operations of the ADT. The class defines the abstract data type. Elements created of this type are referred to as instances of the class. A key element in object-oriented programming is the ability to derive the new classes from existing classes by adding new methods or redefining methods. The new class can inherit much of its implementation from the existing class. So deriving new classes from existing classes is this concept that we've been discussing 
of inheritance. An advantage of inheritance is that information is inherited by all subclasses, but is expressed only once within the system. Consider a system for tracking people at a university. We might need to maintain information about students, faculty, and staff. These are all people. Thus, there are many common attributes of people or of a person. A student would possess these, faculty would possess these, and a staff member would also possess these common attributes. But there are some properties or characteristics that are distinctive of a student, others distinctive of faculty, and others distinctive of staff. These are the specialized attributes that apply to only a subgroup. We'll present the Java code simply for illustrative purposes. We don't wish to spend a great deal of time examining this code in our presentation. However, we encourage you to take a closer look if inheritance is not something with which you are acquainted from your programming experience. Here, person is a class that represents characteristics common to all people. This is the base class, or the supertype. New classes for each of the subgroups can be created by extending person. This is illustrated here with the student subclass. So notice that student extends person. It's a derived class or a subtype. The student subclass automatically inherits all data members and methods of its superclass, which is person. So those are not stated here in the declaration of student. So keep in mind that every student object is also a person object. This is part of that is a relationship. Student further extends what it inherits by adding things like the college, the year, and uh, the grade point average. And here's a little code just to illustrate how student can be used in an application. All methods that can be made for a person can be made for a student. So here we're seeing things like set GPA, set year, set college, which are unique to the student subclass or subtype, but we're also seeing set age and set gender being invoked. Those were inherited from the person supertype or base class. So the advantages of subclasses can be summarized here. Code is reused. Student uses existing tested code from person. The hierarchy reflects a relationship that exists within the problem domain or application domain that has been modeled. Mechanisms exist to allow other code to treat student as a subtype of person, simplifying code while preserving the benefits of maintaining the distinctions among subtypes. In Java, everything inherits from the class called object. A root of a class hierarchy may contain methods that all subclasses must override. The term root here refers to a local root descending from object. There may be no meaningful way to implement such a method in the root class. The root class is declared to be abstract. In this case, methods that must be overridden in subclasses are also abstract. An abstract method is used to defer the implementation decision to a subclass, also called a deferred method. And then a class that contains abstract methods is referred to as an abstract class. When we examine Oracle Database to look at the object relational implementation of inheritance, we'll see something like this in our discussion. 
Java also has a class-like form called an interface that can be used to encapsulate only abstract methods and constants. An interface is what is called a pure abstract class, wherein all implementation details are deferred. An interface is allowed to have only public methods. Implementing an interface is like extending an abstract class. What happens to our system when a student is also a staff member? That is, you might have a person who's playing two roles, taking classes, but also serving as a staff member at the school. We could create two records for the person, a student record and a staff record. But this could be a bit clumsy to maintain because it's really the same individual. We really need the ability then to create a single record that sometimes can be treated as a student and sometimes as a person and sometimes as a staff member. Multiple inheritance permits the definition of types that inherit attributes and methods from more than one immediate supertype. In Java, interfaces can be used to create such a record. And again, we'll quickly show you the code and leave that for you to digest. We simply wanted to get the point across to you about what multiple inheritance was. So here we define an interface called person. Then a second interface called student, which extends person. And here we're adding those characteristics in terms of behavior and attributes that are unique to person as a subtype. For the purpose of multiple inheritance, we need a second parent. Here we import the date class. And then we define another interface called staff, which again is an extension of person. And finally, we arrive at student employee, which implements both student and staff. This is our example of multiple inheritance. A student employee will be both a student and a staff. We see the methods that are required by a person, and those are followed by the methods that are required by student. And finally, the methods that are required by staff. We've talked in a general sense, but talked also about Java or programming language, hinting at these concepts being applied to a database. It's the ANSI SQL 1999 standard that defines object functionality within a relational framework. Furthermore, it addresses inheritance. In the SQL 1999 standard, inheritance is defined in this manner. A structured type may be defined to be a subtype of another structured type, known as its direct supertype. A subtype inherits every attribute of its direct supertype and may have additional attributes of its own. SQL 1999 inheritance includes more than attributes. It includes methods. Methods of the supertype are also inherited by the subtypes. Note that as we've seen before, Java provides a limited form of multiple inheritance through its distinction between interface and implementation. SQL 1999 does not make this distinction and thus supports a single inheritance facility. In our next video, we'll continue this lecture and examine the SQL 1999 inheritance model as it's been implemented within Oracle Database. Thank you.